Welcome back guys. Today I'm going to show you some mobilization techniques for your lower back. These exercises are fantastic, especially if you're out of the pain stage and now moving on to the healing stage, the pain-free stage. Now it's very important that you understand that if you have lower back pain and the pain is, has disappeared, it's very important that you utilize this time to keep it that way. You don't want your back to stiffen up again and get pain again. So these mobilization techniques are definitely going to help you to keep you pain-free for a longer term, especially if you already had a massage to reduce the pain or you had some treatment from a physio or chiro or osteopath to reduce the pain already. You don't want that to go to waste. Once you mobilize these joints, then you then can progress to do more exercises and strengthening exercises for your lower back. I really hope these mobilization techniques are gonna help you. It's helped a lot of my patients, so I definitely hope they help you. So this is a sphinx pose. Just lay on the floor and prop yourself up onto your elbows so you look like an Egyptian sphinx. Pull your shoulder blades back and maintain a good posture. Make sure you don't drop your head down and replicate like you're slumping at a desk as this will make your neck posture even worse and then that's another issue that we have to address in the future. Or you can check out my neck posture videos on this channel as well. Just hold this position and do eight long breaths. The slower and deeper the breath, the more effective this exercise will be. And then repeat it three to four sets. This should be a relaxed pose. You should not be shaking or overly exerting yourself or be in extreme pain. There might be slight discomfort in the lower back where the hyperextension is, but this is quite normal. Or you might feel a stretch in the front on your stomach because it does stretch your rectus abdominis, which is your abs. If you feel like the Sphinx pose doesn't work, try the Cobra pose. This is also known as the McKenzie position. A lot of physios, osteopaths and chiropractors prescribe this position for lower back pain, disc bulges or sciatica. This position is an advanced version of the Sphinx pose and it's commonly used in yoga. Just place your hands where your elbows were in the previous position and extend them all the way so your arms are nice and straight. This will make you have more of a hyperextension in your lower back and increase the angle there and therefore create more of a lumbar lordosis. So this is a great stretch and position to practice, especially if you've got hypo lumbar lordosis, meaning you have a loss of lumbar lordosis. However, if you do have more of an increase in pain in this position, there could be a chance that you have facet syndrome or some sort of facet dysfunction, as this is similar to an orthopedic test for facet pain or facet syndromes. Once again, hold this position nice and relaxed for eight long breaths. The longer and deeper the breath, the better it is for you. Every time you take a deep and long breath, you open and close the spaces between the vertebrae and your spine, also known as the intervertebral discs. Increasing and closing the spaces there, mobilizing that space, allowing fluid to go in and out of the intervertebral disc, exchanging nutrients in and out of the intervertebral disc, allowing it to heal faster and better and rehydrating them. A research paper was published in 2013 comparing the McKenzie method against the back to school method with 148 patients with chronic low back pain in Brazil. Each patient was instructed to perform the exercises on a four week treatment program with one one session a week. The results showed that the group that followed the McKenzie method had greater improvements from their disabilities within a month. Prayer pose. Try to do this pose after you do the Sphinx or Cobra pose, since it's the opposite position to hyperextension in the lower back, therefore flexing the back. The prayer pose is also a great stretch for decompression in the lower back. Just start on all fours whilst your hands are planted on the ground and shift your body back so your weight is slowly shifting back onto your heels and let your arms slowly stretch out and extend in front of you nice and straight. Allow your weight to slowly relax into the stretch. You don't need to contract any muscles in this stretch or this position. Just relax your shoulders, your upper back and your lower back to ensure a nice and subtle stretch from your neck, your shoulders and your lower back. Do eight long breaths. With every breath, I want you to focus on expanding your abdomen and when you exhale, exhale all the air out of your body. This will open and close the space between your vertebrae, also known as the intervertebral discs. Therefore, encouraging nutrients and fluid back into the intervertebral discs and rehydrating them in and out with the nutrients in the body and therefore allowing it to heal faster and alleviate pain in the lower back and other joints in the body. Do this for three to four sets. Reverse Russian twists. This is one of my favorite exercises to do after a heavy squat session 
or if I've been standing up all day. My lower back will have a lot of pressure there and it'll be very tight and stiff. So I find this exercise really helps with decompressing and mobilizing my lower back, especially the junction where my lower back meets my tailbone, the base of my tailbone, also known as the sacrum. Just lay on your back and bring your knees up, but with your feet still flat on the floor. Now twist your knees from side to side in a nice and controlled manner. I want you to hold the position at the end point of the twist for about half a second just to create more of a stretch at the end of the motion. This way it opens your back a little bit better on each movement. Do about 10 repetitions on each side with a total of 20 altogether. Repeat this 3-4 to four times. I prescribe this exercise to a lot of my patients that have lower back pain or stiffness in the lower back and they always come back telling me how much they love this exercise and some of them even prescribe this exercise to their friends and family because they find that this exercise gives them so much pain relief. Spinal rocks. This is another great mobilization exercise that I like to do in the combination of the cobra pose. To do this exercise, just pull your knees up with both hands and rock back and forth. You don't have to excessively rock. A subtle rock is just enough, as long as it mobilizes your lower back. The main aim of this exercise is to decompress your lower back. So it's not an exercise or a ab exercise, so we don't want you to excessively rock. A nice subtle rock is enough. Do about 20 rocks, three to four sets. This is one of my favorite exercises I like to do to reduce pain and pressure in my lower back, especially if I've been standing for long periods of time or if I've been doing a heavy back squats or hyperextensions at the gym, which causes a lot of stiffness and tightness in the lower back. The hip drop stretch. With this stretch, try to do it in a nice and slow controlled manner. If you do it too quick, you actually create cracks and pops in the lower back. With this stretch, I want you to lay on your back so your shoulders are nice flat against the floor. Now with your hand, grab your opposite knee and then pull it over to that side. This will create a stretch and twist in the lower back. Do it nice and slow and with the other hand, try to keep it on the floor. This will act as a counterweight so you don't roll over. With this stretch, try to do it in a nice and slow controlled manner so you can accentuate the stretching in the muscles in your lower back and any of the joints that are connected there. You will find a bit of a stretch in either the glutes or the lower back and sometimes you might hear some cracks and pops in the lower back. If you do this stretch too quickly or with unnecessary force, you're going to create a large pop or crack in the lower back and you may injure yourself further. Some people find that by creating cracks, it will give them relief. A lot of times by doing this forcefully every single time when you do this stretch, you're loosening a lot of joints that you don't need to loosen up and you're keeping the stiff ones stiff. So it's better to focus on stretching the muscles and mobilizing the joints instead of just cracking your back for the sake of it. If you want to create more of a stretch in this position, just extend your leg out as straight as possible. This will create more torque on the lower back, adding more weight onto the stretch. Hold this position for about 30 seconds and then repeat this on the other side as well. Once again, in a nice and controlled manner, make sure you breathe nice and deep and that way you accentuate the stretch and mobilize the joint. Try not to contract any muscles in any of these stretches as it makes you stiffen up even more and we want to really take advantage of this stretch via breathing since it will accentuate the stretch and make the stretch more effective. Repeat on both sides three to four sets. Once again guys, thanks for watching. Now if these mobilization techniques are too painful for you to do, I highly recommend you check out my lumbar spine decompression technique video. This video will help you alleviate a lot of the pressure and stiffness in the lower back, especially if you just had a dis bulge, dis herniation, or tight and stiffness in the lower back that's causing you extreme pain. Then you can do these mobilization techniques. Now, if these mobilization techniques are too easy for you and you can progress into strengthening exercises to prevent you from injury or pain in the future, I highly recommend you check out my lower back exercise video. Now, I also want you to join my VIP Facebook group. I'll put the link in the description box below. Remember to support my channel, hit subscribe, hit like, comment below if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next one.